All right, so now we are going to read the shot heard round the world from two different accounts, one on pages 28 and 29 of Liberty, and one from pages 28, 29, 30, and 31 from George versus George. I think it'll be awesome to read it from two different accounts so that we can compare and contrast them and discuss how they are different. So first, starting off with the one from Liberty, page 28, the shot heard round the world. The Redcoats marched all night, a distance of 16 miles. When they reached Lexington at dawn on April 19, 1775, they found a ragged line of Minutemen drawn up on the village green. Ye villains, ye rebels, disperse! Lay down your arms! shouted Major John Pitcairn, a British officer. Suddenly, a shot rang out. Nobody knows which side fired it. This was the first shot of the Revolutionary War. It is known as the shot heard round the world. Now, all the Redcoats raised their muskets and blazed away. When the smoke cleared, eight Minutemen were dead and ten were wounded. The rest ran for cover. The Redcoats gave three cheers. Then they wheeled around and marched off to Concord. In the center of town, they chopped down the Liberty Pole and burned it. Smoke billowed into the air. Meanwhile, Minutemen had been gathering on a hill beyond a stream. When they saw the rising smoke, they thought the British were setting fire to the town. They raced toward a bridge that crossed the stream. The Redcoats fired a volley across the water, and two Americans were killed. Fire, fellow soldiers! For God's sake, fire! shouted the Americans' commander, Major John Butterick. A volley rang out from the Americans. Seconds later, three redcoats were dead and one was dying. At least ten more were wounded. The rest quickly retreated. The redcoats formed columns and began marching back to Lexington. But the Minutemen took a shortcut. They were waiting in ambush on both sides of the narrow road. Muskets blazed from behind stone walls, barns, bushes, and houses. As the redcoats marched on, the Minutemen ran ahead took up new positions and fired again. The terrified redcoats began to run. They dashed into Lexington and flung themselves up on the ground, gasping for breath. They were lucky. A British officer, Lord Percy, had just arrived with 1,000 fresh troops. These new arrivals held off the Minutemen while the exhausted soldiers rested. Then they began to march along back to Boston. It was a nightmare. All along the route, Minutemen shot at them from ambush. It was dark by the time they finally staggered into town and reached their barracks. Now I'm going to switch it up to the George versus George book. And this again starts on page 28. It says, The shot heard round the world from George versus George. British General Thomas Gage had been trying hard to keep the peace in Massachusetts, but he was ordered in the name of the king to use more force. In April 1775, a spy in Boston warned Gage that colonial troublemakers were stashing big piles of ammunition in nearby Concord. This was bad news. A bloody war could break out. Gage decided that the British Army had better go seize John Hancock and Sam Adams, two rebel leaders who were hiding out in Lexington. Then they should burn the weapons in Concord before people started getting themselves killed. Gage quickly planned a secret raid. A British regiment shivered through a chilly night, rowing and then wading across the Charles River. On the morning of April 19th, the soldiers had marched as far as Lexington when they came across about 70 Patriot militia gathered on the village green. The rebels were armed because rebel spies William Dawes and Paul Revere had spread the alarm that the British were on their way. Everybody's nerves were on edge. Still holding their weapons, the Patriots began to back away and look for cover. Then someone fired a shot, nobody knows who, but as soon as they heard it, the British soldiers started shooting. Eight Americans were killed and then ten more were wounded. Not everyone realized it at the time. But the Revolutionary War had just begun. John Hancock and Sam Adams had disappeared. The Redcoats marched on to Concord to destroy the ammunition, but most of the ammunition had vanished, too. Meanwhile, great multitudes of men from farms and villages all over the countryside gathered in order to fight back. 
You can look at the image on page 29, but we'll continue on page 30. It says, Each side told a different tale about Lexington and Concord. Rebel newspapers reported that bloodthirsty redcoats burned houses, drove women into the streets, and butchered old men and infants. The king was told that rebel savages broke the rules of war by ambushing his army. Then they scalped fallen British infantry and even took their ears. George Washington was already famous for his fearless leadership when he had fought alongside the British 20 years earlier. On June 15, 1775, the Second Continental Congress gathered in Philadelphia and unanimously elected the 43-year-old Virginian to become commander-in-chief of their newly formed Continental Army. But how could a small, poorly trained army with almost no money defeat one of the world's most awesome military powers? Washington refused to accept any salary, asking only that Congress pay his expenses. The very next morning, long before Washington took command of his troops, the Redcoats back in Massachusetts awoke to discover an amazing sight. In just one night, about 1,200 rebels had secretly built a massive fort atop Breed's Hill by Charleston. Both sides fought fiercely until the rebels finally ran out of powder and ammunition. The rebels ended up losing the battle, but the British lost 92 officers, more than half their men, and more than twice as many soldiers as the rebels themselves lost. You can look at the image on the right side, page 31, where it shows the hill. You know, we've possibly heard Bunker Hill before in Charleston, which was burned by the Redcoats, unfortunately. Now, this shows the Battle of Bunker Hill and three very important people having a discussion between William Howe, Henry Clinton, and again, that British general we've talked about before, Thomas Gage.